a new year, the same problems, except this time, they're worse. There are working people coming to the food bank. There are young mums, young dads coming to the food bank. There are families coming to the food bank. The cost of living crisis has, for some, become too much to bear. It's quite, it's quite hard to deal with. Soaring energy, food and petrol prices have forced many to choose between heating and eating. The price of everything has gone up. And it's so hard to explain to kids why, why I'm not eating my dinner with them. For others, the cost hike has crippled their business. We've overcome so many hurdles to even get here and just, yeah, I feel like I'm just getting knocked out by the big guys. These are issues that are impacting people from different walks of life, but they're all asking the same question. What happens next? It's 9am in Kakodi. The sun has barely risen and the snow is mounting. But volunteers at the local food bank have already been here for hours, preparing breakfast, lunch and dinner parcels. We put in our parcels eggs and rolls and we buy in fresh fruit and vegetables um, from the local suppliers. The Kakodi Food Bank is one of the biggest of its kind in Scotland. So we're all checklists all done this morning. Yeah, we noticed last night we were quite low in the pasta, but then we've gone and got some, so that we managed oh, to get that. Oh, us low in oh, pasta, that's I know, unusual. which is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. When it opened, it was only supposed to be in operation for a few months. That was nine years ago. The charity now has five food banks and 143 volunteers, helping more than 3,000 people a month. But that number is constantly growing. It's a huge demand at the moment, and the question is about how can we change that, how can we bring improvement, how can we get that safety net that did exist, which is now quite porous, back to being there that we don't need to use food banks. Because the, we all know the, 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 um, the solution is not food banks. In some areas of the town, three quarters of children live in poverty, whilst more than 20% of people find it almost impossible to pay their energy bills. We know from our work that 40% of the people who come into the food bank have children in the house. So there's 40% of children that need to be looked after. I've got that filled up today, have we? As much as we can have. Volunteers buy the majority of the food themselves, and most months that bill tops £18,000. We know there's a deficit every month in, in what comes in financially and what goes out financially. Our fear is that we might not be able to sustain it, but those who have the levers of power need to realise that if we're not going to be here, where are people going to go to? What are you going to do? What's your plan? What would it do to this community if you weren't here? I think a lot of people who are on the margins at the moment and are really struggling would be pushed to even extreme, more extremes of poverty, and I don't actually know what they would do. I think it'd be devastating, you know, really devastating, because, uh, well, they get so much more help than just food, <laughs> so, and uh, there's just not enough money to go around. As food banks face an uncertain future, for many businesses, the picture isn't much clearer. Food and drink prices across Scotland are rising at their fastest rate since 1977. The latest inflation figures show costs are 16.5% higher than the year before. Sarah Capaldi and her husband own and run Pantanope in Glasgow. We literally put every penny when I say blood, sweat and tears, it was blood, sweat, sweat and tears into this business. Um, it financially and emotionally drained us um, to even get opened, but we managed it. Is that everything for you? Yeah, thank you. Have you guys got a wee loyalty card thing or app or...? Places like this are kind of like the heart of any community, right? If you didn't have that, this place would be worse off. But the one-two punch of rising produce costs and increasing energy prices mean they could lose everything. If we look back at fruit and veg receipts from last year, our cash and carry receipts, and we're almost double. Vegetables are costing the exact same as the cheese or the meat. 
everything costs the same um, and it all costs too much. A lot of people said that whilst Covid was hard you had support but that this feels different. It's so strange to say Covid was less scary. People couldn't spend their money on things they usually would spend their money on so they were spending money in coffee shops or takeaways and we had support from the government. Do you want any sugar in the coffee? Uh, no thank you. I think we need to be given a break. There's no point in me saying to customers, oh, you know, try and support us and use your coffee shops. Because if their bills are going up and their food's going up, then they're not going to have money to spend on coffee. That's a luxury. As well as charities and businesses, some of our most vulnerable are being hit hardest by the rising cost of living. Research from the Glasgow Disability Alliance shows that a disabled person already faces, on average, a £500 of additional costs each month. And for one in five disabled people, those costs are as high as £1,000. Hi, Alan. How are you doing? What have you been up to? Alan has Duchenne muscular dystrophy, a wasting disease that means he has almost no mobility. Breathing machines, a mechanical mattress, specialist remote controls, a hoist and more, all work not to just give him a quality of life, but to keep him alive. He's a person that stays in bed the majority of the time. So you've got your heating on, his telly's on, his laptop's on, and with the cost of living going up and up and up, it's just, where do we... You know where do we go from from there because it is it's a lot of money to have that these sort of things on all the time that's not a choice for him though is it no, it's, it's, not, not, it's not like no. you or i who could turn that down no no this that that's um it's all part of alan's care does alan get worried when he hears about the cost of things going up he watches the news all the time so he's seeing what everybody's saying so he's kind of oh my goodness you know what's going to happen to me am i going to be all right from people paying extra to keep life-saving equipment running to single parents struggling to put food on the table, everyone is feeling the pinch. My fuel bill's doubled, food bill's pretty much doubled as well. Next month is going to be shocking when I get my bill through for my, my gas just because I've, I've had to have it on. I, don't, I didn't want to have it on. I would rather just be cold myself but because I've got the kids, it's, it's a necessity. Dean has three children. He says when he can get work, he takes it, but getting by is getting harder. Yeah, always worried about where the next meal's coming from or what you're going to do with your next payment, how you're going to branch out over the next three to four weeks. And it's just, just see, it seems impossible. £50 pound shop three months ago was almost about £100, £150 now. Am I sitting down with the kids having a, a meal cooking for everybody rather than just cooking for them? Because uh, they're always like, why are you not, why are you not eating? And I'll, I'll just tell them I'm having my dinner when they go to bed, you know, just so they don't feel bad that I'm not eating. In terms of the first six months of 2023, if things don't calm down, how close will that push families like yours to the brink? I think it'll happen pretty fast. I don't think it'll, even the six months, people probably won't even last that long, to be honest. Uh, I don't say families are going to, going to cope. I sit down and have to tell myself sometimes there's not, nothing else I can do just now. What's one nothing else I can do? The ongoing day-to-day -day reality of the cost of living is that it continues to stretch resources and test communities. For some, turning to neighbours or support services feels like the only way forward. But the question is, how long can people at the sharp end of this crisis Keep going. Everybody who's involved in here do it because they want to stand alongside the ones who are the most vulnerable, the most poorest in society. If only just to say that we stand beside you and that you're not forgotten about. I just feel that choosing between heating and food in the UK in 2023 just shouldn't be a thing. I feel like no one cares. I really feel like no one cares. Yeah. Every morning you get up, you beat when you go to bed, you know, it's, it's, it's just hard to, hard to keep a strong face in front of the kids, it really is.